to another video. Today we will be updating on my year Mastix. Quite a bit bigger now. He's shedding now for some reason. And if you don't know where sh what shedding is, basically they're shedding off the new skin, and it'll get rid of um, it'll get rid of uh stuff on the skin, like mites and stuff like that, and bacteria. And the reason why I put him in there is because he might whip me with his tail. And one time when he whipped me with his tail, it actually drawed blood and I don't and I don't want that to happen again. Cool. And also one of the year and also um a lot of the aromastics that you see in stores are wild caught. And actually these two, both of our aromatics are wild caught, but we're trying to breed them so, so that we, we're trying to breed them so we can sell them and make, and when they're wild caught, they're, they're likely to get diseases more often because we had a year old before that, we had a year old before these two and it died to a disease because it was wild caught. Sadly. And it was like very skinny and it just couldn't survive, sadly. But anyway. Also, they can. They. Since we have them on bird seed, they can also eat it. So. That's also a bright side. Unlike Nugget, be, because Nugget sometimes. Sometimes he might accidentally eat wood chips when he's um trying to eat but luckily they can't fit in his mouth so he's fine species of uromastics like those ornate uromastics and Egyptian Euromastics. Egyptian Euromastics are actually the biggest species of Euromastics before, but they usually go for a lot of money because one time I went to LL Reptile, the place where I got these two, and they actually had a baby for sale, and it was nine hundred dollars. That seemed pretty pr ridiculous, so I didn't really care to buy it at all. And plus, it might have, it was probably a wild cut from the wild, even though it was a baby. And because most of are a wild cut, as I said. Because most people can't, some people try to breed them, but they're not real heard of. They're, they're kind of new to the reptile lobby, so people don't really know how to breed them and stuff. Um, but hopefully this year we're going to try to breed these two, hopefully. When magics are wild caught, they tend to be, uh, more feisty, because they were socialized from a young age, because they were caught from the wild. And when they're caught from the wild, they have more diseases and stuff like that, which, which I already said. And also, if your Euromastix has a disease, well, you can try, like, uh, giving it a, um, a bath so some of the, um, stuff can get out of their system. But yes, but yeah, a lot of the times it doesn't work because they just died because the disease was already in them in the wild and they can't do anything. And plus, if you, and plus, don't get animals from the wild because if you bring them in captivity, you can... It'll spread diseases that they already had in the wild to your collection that's probably captive bred. And then they have the disease and then they die and then you end up with a whole dead reptile collection. And then that's a, t and then that's a lot of money wasted just because one animal spread disease to your entire collection. But also there's, but also there's this thing called quarantine where you keep an animal separated from the from other animals cages like basically we would um instead of putting instead of getting like a new animal and putting it 
and and putting it um like in here, you would you would like put it somewhere else so that so that if they have disease they can't spread it over here and you do that for like three to six months and then you should be good and if you're wondering what this cage is up here that's um bella's cage my my i almost said articulated python it's my boa my albino boa if you remember from previous videos like two years ago and stuff and if you're a kid and you're watching this You'd probably want to be like around nine or ten to like have your mastics because they're hard to keep. And plus, if you're smaller, I mean younger, if they swipe you with their tail, it kind of hurts, but not that badly. But you might accidentally freak out and accidentally drop the lizard because because it whipped you with its tail. So I'd recommend to be like nine or ten to have one. And if you don't know, if you drop it on the floor, they might break one of their bones or even die. But they're harsh lizards, so they're probably gonna survive. But it's something you you'd not want to happen. You'd not want to have your lizard break one of your bones or anything. So just be nine or ten if you want to have one. If you're barking in the background. That's Roxy. She's gotten old enough. Anyway, um. Also, I feed them every day. I feed them various vegetables, greens, and stuff like that. And they also need UVB and a basking light so they can sun themselves. Because if they don't have any lighting, they'll, they'll perish. Keep the basking light on from like, like 10 in the morning to like, um, around five or six in the afternoon and the other um and the other lights you should probably keep on uh most of the day like the um this the the um the uvb i'm pretty sure um the heat light you should also you should keep that on for like um Every, you should keep that on, you should keep that on every, every hour of the day. You should keep that on, like, forever. Cool. You need three lights so they're, uh, the, and you also need three lights so that their cage is well lit and also well heated. Because they live in the desert, as I said, and they need a lot of heat to live in there. And also humidity and stuff like that. Thanks for lot for watching and like the video and like the video and subscribe. Bye guys.